Okay, this is lesson 9.4 on page 355 in your book. We are graphing relationships. You have learned that tables and equations are two ways to represent the relationship between two quantities. You can also represent a relationship between two quantities by using a graph. So, in the first example, a cafeteria has an automatic pancake making machine. The table shows the relationship between the time and hours and the number of pancakes the machine can make. So we've got to graph the relationship that's re represented by the table. All right, so over here in the table, this tells me the time in hours and how many pancakes can be made. So in one hour, there's 200 pancakes. In two hours, there's 400 pancakes, and so forth. So first, we're going to write ordered pairs. So it tells us here that we're going to let x be the time in hours. So these are all our x's, okay? And it tells us that y is going to be the pancakes made. So these are the y's. So to make the ordered pairs, we have 1 for x, y for, or 200 for y. So then when we have 2 for x, what would we have for y? 400. When we have 3 for x, what would we have for y? 800. All right, what would my next one be? 800. Wait, 4 and 800. 4 and 800. And then my last one? 5 and 1,000. 5 and 1,000. Okay, so first we just took the information from the table and we made ordered pairs with that information. And they told us which one would be X, which one would be Y. All right, so next we've got to choose an appropriate scale for each axis of the graph. And we've got to label them, which they've already, they've already got it started for us. So we just went ahead for time and hours. Notice it has to go here because these are the X values. So we just need to complete this. So I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, five and 6. And then over here, what are they going up by? The numbers are, but no, what if we went by each? Um, 100. So if you wanted to go back and fill in the hundreds, you can. I actually probably would. So 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. all the way up to 1,000. So when it says, when it said that we had to um, choose an appropriate scale, on the bottom it made sense to go by ones, right? Because our time went by ones. And over here on the side it made sense to go by hundreds since um, it's counting by two hundreds when we actually graph them. And we had room to go by hundreds. Now, if we hadn't had room, we could have gone by two hundreds. All right, so the next step is to graph our ordered pairs. So the first ordered pair is already graphed for us, one and two hundred. Then we had two and what? Two and four hundred. So two and four hundred would be here. Then we had three and six hundred. Then we had four and eight hundred. And then we had 5 and 1,000. So if you connected all these, we'd have a nice diagonal line. Does anybody have a question about that example? I thought we did yesterday, isn't it? Not, it's not exactly what we did yesterday. Yesterday we were writing the equations and uh, making the tables. Today we're graphing. Okay, let's look at the next page. So we're not actually writing equations today. We're using a table, but we're not actually writing the equation. The table shows the relationship between the number of bicycles Y Sean has left to assemble and the number of hours X he has worked. Graph the relationship represented by the table to find the unknown value of Y. So first, we're going to write our ordered pairs based on this. And just notice that they've told us that X is time and hour. So these are my X values. And the Y would be the um, bicycles that are left to be assembled. 
So when time is zero, hours is zero, meaning this is what we're starting with, right? Before time starts, we have 10 bicycles we need to assemble. After one hour, we have eight left to assemble, and so forth. So my first ordered pair is zero, 10. My second ordered pair would be what? One, eight. One, eight. What would the three be? When X is three, what would Y be? All right, and then when X is four, Y is two. two. All right, so now we're going to graph those. So zero and ten would be here. One and eight would be here. Three and four. And four and two. So now take your protractor and use it to connect and connect them like that. appear to lie on the line. Use a ruler or your protractor to draw a dashed line through the points. Use the line to find the y value that corresponds to an x value of 2. So what that means is, is we're going to go up to where, we're going to where x is 2, and we're going to see where that meets the line, which should be right here. So when x is 2, y would be 6. I'm just going to go ahead and write it right there. So down here, when X has a value of 2, Y has a value of 6. So that means after two hours, Sean still has six bicycles left to assemble. Any questions there? All right, go to the next page. I'm going to go ahead and go through a couple of them with you. All right, so number one, we've got to graph the relationship. So first off, we're going to use the table to create our ordered pairs. So we have 1 and 50, 2 and 100, 3 and 150, and 4 and 200. 1 and 50 is already graphed. So then 2 and 10, or I'm sorry, 2 and 100, then 3 and 150, and then 4 and 200. And we didn't have to find a missing number there, so we don't necessarily have to connect them. All right, so example two. So I would go ahead and write the, the um, ordered pairs. They don't have them here, so if we write our ordered pairs, we have 20 and 100, 40 and 200, 60 and 300, and then 80 and 400. So I'd go over to 20 and up to 100 first. Then I'd go over to 40 and up to 200 and graph it. Over to 60, up to 300 and graph it over to 80 and up to 400 and graph it. Does anybody have a question about what we're doing here? All right, let me go over one more with you. All right, so on this one, We've got to graph the relationship, and then we've got to find the unknown value. So we have 4 and 9. So the ordered pair would be 4 and 9. 4 and 9. Then 5 and 7. Then 6 and 5. 
and then skip the 7 and go to 8 and 1. Then this is where you want to draw the line. All right, so when X is 7, what is Y going to be? 6. Wait, no, 3. 3. Can you not just tell like, the pattern of it? But the whole point of this lesson is to use it by graphing. I know, I mean, like, I mean, I know, you, I know about graphing, but I know about it. You're, but look, the point is to be able to look at a graph and see what the missing number is. You're not always going to have a table. So you've got to learn how to do it here because eventually they'll take the table away. You see what I mean? They won't give you a table. You'll just have to graph it and you'll have to find the missing number. So you need to learn how to do it, know what to do if they don't give you a table. Anybody else have a question? <laughs> 